Hey y'all, welcome back. Today we have lesson 12 for you. Now we're gonna cover volume profile. Anyone who's watched my YouTube videos would know that I have a video already on volume profile. The thing though is, I didn't cover everything as far in depth as I would have, but again, I knew this class was coming, so I waited. So I have some things I wanna cover with you. Volume profile is extremely powerful when used correctly. There's some things that some folks can read online that may not be fully true. And again, there's some things that I do that are never really talked about that I think may really give you guys some great insight into volume profile. So today we're gonna cover this. First, so we're gonna cover the five most basic parts of volume profile, your high volume nodes, low volume nodes, the gaps that they can create, your area of value, and of course our point of control or your POC. All five of those, what do they mean? How do they read? We'll look into it. Secondly, and this is kind of where what I did in discussing my YouTube kind of comes in, we're gonna discuss how the shape of volume profile looks and what that means. There's four different types of shapes. You have capital B, lowercase b, capital P, and a capital D shape. All four of those, what do they mean? With the POCs up or down, what does it mean? Really nice in-depth stuff for you. And lastly, I have such a great tool that TOS has. I'm sure other places have it, but Thinkorswim has a button that you can use coupled with Volume Profile, which can really show you something. Uh, I've never talked about it with anybody. This is an exclusive for you guys. No one else has talked about it online. I can't find anything on it. I think it will really help you change how you view stocks. Um, it's gonna be great. So no further ado, let's get into it. We have three sections to cover. I wanna get done as quickly as possible. Really jam this in here, cause it's a lot of information. And uh, let's get going. So here we have AXU. Again, there's no uh, studies turned on. It's just the price action. Again, we can go through the supports, resistances, find some trend lines. Again, let's just focus on volume profile. So I go to studies, new edit studies, type in volume, then P, top one, volume profile. Plug that in, in apply, okay. So what we have here is we have this nice looking little stack here. Now again, there's four things here. Blue, columns, two yellow lines, and a red line. What does each one mean? So what probably stands out to you the most is the red line. As you can see, it's not really a line. You can see it's much closer to being a channel. You see how it has some thickness behind it? You see how it kind of has two lines? This right here is called the point of control. Now the point of control has multiple things behind it. So the point of control has almost three things that it can show you. The first is that it is the highest volume node on this time frame. We use the 180 day time frame uh, to start off all of our stocks. So on the last six months or 180 days, this has been where the highest volume takes place. This is talking horizontally. So at every price point, dollar, two dollar, three dollar, four dollar, at these price points from one dollar to one cent, one dollar to two cents, whatever the increments are you can increase by, that is the volume where it's high traded the most. So that POC in that little area, that is where most volume comes in at the price points, not by day. You can trade by day at the bottom, that's always there for you. This basically shows you which price points have the most activity. Second, the higher the volume on the POC, or the higher the volume on these nodes, the more likely it is to act as a support or resistance. Say it again, let's make sure we hear it, review, reflect. The point of control is the highest volume node. High volume nodes, so including the POC, are considered supports and resistances. That's massive. You can go ahead and pull up your volume profile and you can check that. We're gonna do something together and cross-reference that. The third thing that it does is that it is gravitational. Now, I do not mean that it is fully gravitational, it's equal at all times. I want you to imagine a planet. Imagine the sun. As we kind of gra gravitate around the sun, we stay in the same area. If we were to really stray away from it and get farther away, its gravitational force becomes weaker. So the closer to the POC you are, the more likely it is to kind of hold you in and condense you and make you consolidate at the POC. You're gonna see with some of these stocks that are ascending channels, ascending triangles, it really breaks away from it. That is a sign of strength. The farther away from it it gets, the weaker it's gonna be pulling you towards it. It's a good sign, but again, we're gonna get into this, you need to be dynamic. As the POC shifts up and down, it also shows you stuff. But for right now, the POC does three things. Support and resistance, show you high volume, gravitational, I'll show you. So what I prefer doing when I have my volume profile up, you'll look like this. I'm gonna scroll and maybe take half the action off and just look at it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my draw trend line tool, extend right, extend left, so it always stays current. I'm gonna right click, 
We're gonna draw his channel as always and get it right there. You see how it's perfectly lined up with our POC? You see that? On this time frame, we can now assume the price point from 287 to 289. So in these two cents, the most volume is gonna occur. And I'm gonna take it, double click it. I make it dashed and red. That's my preference because the line itself over here is red. And so it's not just like cutting through the action looking like a, a candle almost. I make it dotted so I don't get confused. As we can see, I have said that high volume nodes act as supports and resistances. As you can see, it does it. It certainly does. You see a lot of price action keeps hitting against it and wants to be consolidated near it. See this resistance, resistance acting as a support over here, resistance again. As you can see, as we get closer to the line, it really likes to hold it. You see how it's like a planet? As soon as it goes, oh, so far it got corrected. It comes back down because of price action and then it gets consolidated, bounced around. It's a tight, tight gravitational force. You see that? But again, as you get farther away, you see how it gets pulled back in? You get farther away, it means less and less. And as price action corrects itself, it consolidates. So again, your POC is gravitational and acts as a support and resistance. And I also said that high volume nodes will act as a support, which gets us to the other ones, the blue bars. These are gonna be high volume nodes and low volume nodes. And again, it's shown the exact same way. If there's more of a bar there, it's a high volume node, and some are gonna be lower, it's a low volume node. The high volume nodes will usually act as supports and resistances. I'll show you. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm not even looking at price action. Okay, you got this little baby tail here, that's okay. Take your trend line tool, and you can use the price level as well. I'm gonna put any high volume nodes. Now it should be said that I mean high volume uh, you know, according to how far up these are, that's fine. But again, I'd also consider any area that has a stick out, like see how this one is lower than these over here. But given the fact that these are pretty small over here, it's a high volume node compared to its neighbors. I would consider that a high volume node. Oh, this is a high volume one. That's a high volume one. And then the, consider it to its neighbors right there. We have the POC, so that's okay right there. That's a high volume node probably right about there and right about here. And if I were to zoom out, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, like usual. I zoom out, how's it look? Well, it looks okay. We definitely have some of that hit. Right there would be a really good resistance. That's a good resistance. This is a really good one. You see how good that is? Almost perfect. We're missing one in here. Okay, that's not good. This one's okay. It's okay. It's really good for price, price action, and a little bit current. And then these two are pretty worthless. So I would take these off. All right, that's okay, remove these. And see that we have our really good ones right here. I would then probably be inclined to activate, move this one down, and then I'd probably put one more right here. So as you can see, we will scroll back over. It looks pretty good, so it's pretty close. And as you can see, if you want to just do supports and resistances off volume profile, it's totally possible. So you're probably thinking, what about the low volume areas? What's that mean? The low volume areas are gonna be where wicks happen. Low volume, little canyons or little dip areas are where wicks happen because this is not where high volume is. It comes in and gets out, right? It comes in that little price area, doesn't like it, it comes right back out. So you can put that in the context and think towards the bottom of a chart or the top of the chart. We have a lot of low volume. You get a lot of wicks trying to get out. Or even inside of price action, you're gonna see these little low areas and canyons. It's where wicks happen, I'll show you. So looking over here, let's just take off our lines real quick. Let's see if I can do that really quickly. Yep, let's take off our lines off. So we know that the high volume nodes are gonna be uh, supports and resistances. We have a low volume node here. We have some over here, low volume here, low volume here, and low volume here. I wanna see if there's any kind of wicking going on. Let's check. So as you can see, if you look at price action, you can see all these wicks right here. See how these all wicking into it? See all these wicks? Then even over here, all these little wicks right here, these are low volume nodes. Down here, again, just one, but up here, see all these wicks that are hitting? Right, so you know if you are getting close to the price action is getting close to a low volume area, you should have two. Uh, you should have two things in your head. One, I should probably consider selling there if it's towards the top of the chart. If it's towards the top and it's wicking, there's a high, you know, high probability it's going to come right back down because it doesn't want to be in there. And then two, if you're towards the bottom of the chart, I would consider holding, right? Because at this point, it doesn't want to leave this area, right? So if you're towards the top and you have price action, you're holding a stock. Consider selling, of course, price action comes first, but again, if you don't see any type of uh, volume being built there, cut it. And if you're towards the bottom and it's wicking down and you're kind of holding a stock and it's kind of near your stop loss, 
I would consider holding it, right? Unless we see a lot of volume building up, then you may want to sell it. But there's no volume happening. Don't freak out. You're probably gonna be okay. And lastly, we have two yellow lines. This is called the area of value. This is where 70% of volume takes place. These are gonna develop into some very important lines and I'll show you. So we have two yellow lines right here. We have one here at $2.24 and one here at $3.07. These are gonna act as a few things. The first is that in this area, it gives you an overall channel of where you think a lot of the price action is gonna happen. Uh, if it's towards the bottom of it, you can consider it a good deal given the uh, price action because you know that most volume below this area, you see how we have pretty low volume, mostly will wick into it and come right back out. So it acts as a really good area for that. And towards the top, it acts as a pretty very strong support. And again, the reason is low volume above it, a lot of stuff's gonna wick out. So really what we're looking at is just gives you kind of a channel of where you think a lot of price action's gonna happen. And again, I like to use it kind of with the POC because if the POC is down here towards the bottom and price action's towards the top and it's getting close to this line, most likely to come back down a little bit and the POC is up higher and the price action is kind of getting above it, a better chance to kind of run up higher. So again, if you really want to buy a stock towards the top of this area, I would be cautious because you're going to have low volume above it. If you want to sell because of a stop loss and it's near here, I would be inclined to hold it. So what I usually do is I'm going to take my uh, drawing tool here, go right, go left, as always, extend to the left, create as a channel, channel it off for myself, and make it a little bit fatter lines. Now I have a channel, right? So with an ascending channel or a, you know, a triangle that's above it or kind of action, um, you know, it may look a little bit different, but given this area, I know that my main area to buy will be below the POC usually, because it's a little bit high, and I want to buy closer to the bottom here, right? We know that our volume's gonna be strong anywhere. We know there's gonna be some gaps here, maybe some gaps here, but again, we have our supports and resistances based on the volume profile. This gives us a really good idea. And here's the best part about drawing it out on the actual chart. So if you take nothing else away from this, you need to always draw a volume profile on all your charts when you start charting them. When you find a stock that you like, you must always draw supports, resistances, and trend lines and make your channels before you really look into the fundamentals. Same with volume profile. I usually start with volume profile and then I make supports off of that. But here's the big kicker. And we're gonna look at this with our last part of the lesson. Volume profile is going to change. As time goes on, in the next 180 days, as this cycles out, it'll be completely different than where it was. Even a day or a week later, it's much different. And we're gonna show you that in, towards the end of the lesson. But again, if you have this on here, you must have it to really be successful and use it properly. No one talks about it. Not everyone just thinks it should be used you know, once a day. You draw it on here, you have it on here, you can then come back to it and see. And I'm gonna show you at the end what you can do with it. But again, let's look at the shapes real quick. So you always draw it on there. Always draw it on your charts. Every single time, POC is a high volume, acts as a support and resistance, it's gravitational. The closer you are, the more likely you are to consolidate. The farther away you get, the weaker it's gonna be. Two, high volume nodes act as supports and resistances. Three, the low volume areas or the gaps are gonna act as where wicks are gonna happen. And again, you need to check the historical price action. We're gonna get into that next lesson. If a stock reverses actually where the gaps are, if it reverses there, play it that way, right? Not every stock acts the same. This is for most stocks, so make sure if you see that happening, you point out to yourself and write it down somewhere. And then we also, we covered the area of value. Again, I'm not implying buying at the bottom is best. I'm implying that anything above it or below it, you're most likely to come back into the channel. So again, if you get above it and you wanna buy above your volume profile and wanna go long, if the price action says so, yeah, go for it. But if it's like a horizontal channel, may not be the best deal. And if you are towards the bottom of a volume of profile and you would go beneath it and you wanna sell, wait, there's a good chance it's gonna wick down and come right back into it. So again, use that for what you want, it's there for you. Let's check some shapes real quick. So here we have Morph, M-O-R-F. I wanna do every step with you so far. So it looks like a good stock, it looks like a good channel play, I see it's ascending, I wanna check it out. Let's do our supports and resistances first. I'm gonna do the trend line, just because I wanna make a channel off of this one, I assume. And so we can start down here. Not very useful, uh, not useful supports, not useful, not useful for supports. We're getting closer. Um, I would assume that this area is definitely gonna be where I wanna buy into, given the current price action over here. But again, I see some green, so I may wanna see if I wanna maybe move my volume up uh, for my loading zone. But again, I like it right here. We'll activate and, or let's duplicate. 
scroll up and see, okay, that's one, so I can put one there. But again, price action is so much more uh, higher than here, so why not wait and see what's up over here? That's one. This is definitely one right there. This is definitely one right there. And this is definitely one up here. So we have our five areas. Again, extend left all of them if you want to. I like to always extend left and right. That way they always stay relevant. Um, the bottom ones are extended right, so we're all already good to go. So that, there's our supports and resistances, right? It looks really, really good. I like it a lot. Again, you can use volume profile for that. I traditionally only use it for the POC and area value. Um, but again, you can use it for your supports and resistances. Um, looks good on supports, looks good on resistances. I want to find a loading zone. Seeing as we have higher price action and lower price action, and this is holding very well, it's taking off. I'm not going to buy this anytime soon, but I'm going to make this my loading zone. I think anywhere in here, right? I want to catch some of these moves if it does come down and kind of wicks into it. But again, I think our best area value is going to be right here. So let's make that into a channel. It's golden. I now know for the future, if it comes back down, I'm going to buy in. Let's find some trend lines. Um, I always start at the bottom left, all the way right, come up. And as we can see, oh, it lines up perfectly. That's definitely not an accident. That's definitely there for a reason. Again, that looks really, really good. I now know for the future, if it keeps going up, then it comes back down. Maybe this loading zone is not going to be as relevant, right? If it does take off on us and becomes an ascending chart and it breaks above this 3557 resistance, if it breaks that, I need to redo my trend lines. But for now, it's going to be okay. That's definitely there. You could also come over and just double check and see that maybe um, this could have been the trend line as well, right? Right here. Right, that could definitely be one as well, as you can see. And so again, it comes off your preference. The bottom one is definitely more aggressive and definitely saying that it's going to go up higher. This one's saying it's moving a little bit slower, okay? So it comes down to your preference. I'm going to keep the aggressive one just because it lines up so well. It looks really good. Go to our studies, edit studies. Let's add volume profile now that we've done our basic stuff. We have our uh, steps down, step one and two. We apply it, and let's see what we have here. Okay, as you can see, our supports line up pretty, pretty well with high volume nodes. Uh, they're really, really close. What I like to do, once I turn these lines on, you can see it gets kind of confusing, right? Because you have the golden channel, but there's the yellow lines. What I'm gonna do is take this one, activate it, move it on down. Now I'm gonna make this into a channel, right? Now this line, that was a support, that was a little bit higher. Now it's gonna be our POC, it was right there. Instead of drawing a whole new one, there's our POC, it looks really, really good. Then we can take this line, activate it, move it up a little bit, redraw the channel, come up, make this into area value, and then we can take this one and keep it if you want. I'm going to keep it because it's our nearest support area. So again, looks really, really good. We can then turn it off if you want to. And there you have it. We now have our uh, area value. As you see, it's pushing above it, which again, would you buy into this? Probably not. It has a high chance of coming back down. And then again, if you want it, if it does drop back down and gets near the POC, you see how much consolidation is happening. As it gets closer, it consolidates. So again, if it does come back down, I'm going to try and aim to buy it around $26. One thing to mention again, just look at it, you see all this area is very low volume and it's all wicking up here. If this starts to build up, this may become a support area. As you can see, this uh, area value line, if it comes up and it comes back down, it is going to retest this dotted line as a support. That is an appropriate time to buy in, right? Because you have a very clear area of value. This may be a support. You can also then use that as a stop loss area if it drops beneath it. But again, as you break above, if this does turn into a high volume node, which it has, it will act as a support and resistance going forward. So again, it looks really good. It all adds up. One thing I want you to notice is our first shape. We have what is known as a capital D. As you can see, it will be hard for me to draw it with our tool here because it's not really a good tool for drawing on here. As you can see, if you follow the price action like this, you see how it looks like a capital D? And again, I can put a picture on screen. You see how it's a capital D? That's your first shape of volume profile. When the shape is like this, nine out of 10 times the volume profile uh, point of control will be towards the middle as it is. A capital D tells you one thing. It tells you that this stock is consolidating. As it's a capital D like this, it's evenly distributed. That POC is very strong, it wants to pull it back towards it. All the price wants to come back towards the POC. But 
A capital D leads to consolidation. What does consolidation mean? A breakout's happening. Now, is it happening now? Nope, we don't know. But we know with a capital D on the volume profile, most likely this consolidation area, up and down, up and down, for Morph, it's from $24 to $32. It is trying its best to break out bullish or bearish. So again, keep that in mind, the capital D does show consolidation. So that's your first shape, and that being said, as you can see, it's trying to break out above or below. As it builds up more volume up here, it's gonna push everything up and hopefully it takes off. There's a chance if it does dip back down and come down here, it'll develop a new shape. But your first lesson on uh, letter shapes is that the capital D leads to consolidation, which then leads to a breakout. Let's look at the next one. Let's look at PCH. And again, I wanna do this all with you. I want you guys to start seeing what I see. So I wanna do our supports and resistances first. I'm gonna go strictly off of the volume profile. And again, what you can do is use your trend line to scroll over and hit uh, extend left is totally fine. Or you can use a price level tool. I intend to make some channels, so I'm gonna use the trend line. That's one. Uh, this is definitely one here. And again, you could just use the POC for this, but I'm gonna use all of them. That's one. That is one. And this is one. Again, I think four is good. You know, five or six is fine. Let's see how well this lines up. As we can see, it's very close. Um, it looks really, really good. These are pretty, pretty accurate. I would definitely change them just a little bit. Uh, for this one, I'd definitely just move this up, make this into my point of control. Just do that off the bat. And again, that's a really good support area. Really good uh, resistance as well. Looks really, really solid. Again, this is probably relevant, but again, I'd keep it just in case. And then again, this one's probably low enough and it's far away from the price action. I would activate it, redraw the channel, come up here and make it into my area value. And as you can see, because we're above it, we're above our area value, see this gap? It's wicking into it. You see how it's wicking? It's trying its damnedest right now to either pick. If it doesn't want to come all the way back down into our price level area, an area value, or is going to wick down and come right back up. And that's how you get these breakouts, right? It gets above your uh, high area, your all these supports, and then it can bounce off those and keep going, right, and forging ahead. So we're going to see what it does. So there's your supports and resistances. Bottom left, as always, come on up. We can see we have an obvious trend line. Wow, what a great pick for me. Looks really good. That would definitely be my area of value moving forward. That looks really good. When it comes to support I would buy off of, you can definitely draw a loading zone if you would like. For a stock like this, given the price action, I would definitely use uh, your POC. This is definitely one, or not your POC. I would definitely use your area of value as my loading zone. And I'd probably put a line above it, right? So I'd probably say anywhere from about here and up. Then again, I'd be more accurate if I wanted to. Uh, do it for real. But anywhere above this line and this channel. So again, either one is a fine buy-in zone. We have it right there. You could have bought it and going along. It looks really good. I like it a lot. But this leads us to our second pick of a letter for a volume profile shape. So the second shape is a capital P. This is basically a very bullish setup. All it's showing is that the, the previous price action that's below it is not as relevant. All we're looking at is that it keeps getting higher and pushes the POC higher. So whenever you see a capital P, it's basically a bull flag. It's a great sign for strength for you. So it's never going to be all that perfect, but again, if we look at strictly our lines over here, you definitely have very low, very low, super big over here, all the way big, and then it comes back down to nothing. So as you can see, it's almost like a line takes off hugely and then makes a P. So again, it looks almost like a capital P, as you can see. It's a very bullish thing. If you see this, I would be very cautious to sell. Um, I'd be very inclined to buy uh, into areas of value. Given we have a trend line here that's so strong, I would most certainly buy in here, which I did this morning. I went up, you know, up 3%, and I'd be very, very cautious to sell at this point. This is going to be a longer-term hold given the price volume structure. So again, your second one is a capital P. Let's check the next one. Next is DD. Let's do it from the ground up again. Um, so again, we have some really good supports and resistances. Given the price action over here, I'm gonna really focus above this area um, right here. Anything below that is certainly relevant, but as of now, it's not really gonna be that relevant. So let's do that. We're gonna duplicate our line. Come up and see that this is definitely an area right about there. Right, a lot of price action bounces off here and broke above it. 
and then right above here. Now again, as we get kind of farther out and it's not a great setup for this letter, it's kind of why I'm using it, we can see it's definitely making a support area right here, which is actually a great sign for uh, temporary reasons. That's definitely going to be one right there. So really easy to find the trend lines. I like it a lot. Come down here and scroll over. You know, that definitely was one. You could increase it and cut through a lot of stuff, but that's not really what we want to do. So again, you can come over here. You know, not going to be great. So I'm going to come over here and try over here in this little valley area. And as we can see, it cuts through somewhat, so I'm not going to use that either. Come over here and see it's probably the best one. And we definitely have an uptrend here. Now again, it's very, very steep. The steeper it is, the less likely it's going to live for a long period of time. But again, it's important too to click and measure. So it's up about 50% in 76 days. Not too steep, but as of recently, it's pretty steep. So that's what I'm looking at. I'd definitely buy in down here or up here if I wanted to. But let's check volume profile real quick. So as we can see, we have a giant gap here, right? And that's a very strong support. Now these also act as resistances and it's above it. So that's not a great sign. And again, everything you want is down here. Do you see how every bit of support is down here? You can take all this, redraw it, make, make yourself your uh, area of value, extend the left. Take this, and again, so far away, it's okay to have less lines when so over exhausted. Redraw that as your channel. That's your POC. You see how far away it is? It's not great looking. And again, I want to focus on the shape of our volume profile. This is a lowercase b. A lowercase b is the exact opposite of a capital P, right? A capital P goes up and makes a nice flag. A bearish one is a lowercase b. So when it has a lowercase b volume profile, sure, the price action should always take precedent over the volume profile. It's just another indicator, right? But again, it needs to be considered that a lot of the volume is so much farther down, there's a good chance it's gonna start wicking down and gapping down back into the area of value, that 70% bracketed area. So at, at best, I would definitely test the top of area value as it comes back down. And again, price action took, should take precedent here, but a lowercase b in the volume profile is not a great sign. So as we can see, barring this dot right here, you come all the way over and see it's literally a lowercase b right here. And again, will it survive? It might, if it really builds up strong support here, it could. But looking at it, this is a resistance right here, right here holding it. And again, I think it may gap down again and then retest here. So at worst case, you can try and buy in down here, given volume profile. And again, you can come over here and you can also see connecting these peaks redraws the channel. As you can see, it's currently in a downtrend, not looking very, very good here. So again, you could buy in, but again, I think it's gonna gap down and come back down. So again, your third letter, lowercase b, not a great setup. Let's check the last one. Next is HLT. I already have it turned on, so again, you can always work backwards if you want to. I always start with just pure price action, because that's my personality. I really enjoy that. You certainly can just do it from uh, volume profile first. So we have that area value, you have your POC. Again, anybody who does this knows that battling the 0.0% is hard to get sometimes. Real thin one here. So you can start off with that. And again, you can always come over here and you can draw your supports like that. If you infer, I'm just gonna do a price level because I wanna show you this and then move on. These are all your areas of support and resistance right in here, They're probably right about there. So again, those are your supports and resistances, right? And again, you can definitely draw a trend line. And as I've said, I always put an emphasis on price action over any one indicator. So again, I think that this price action alone is really beautiful. Um, I would definitely wait for I would definitely wait for it to come back down. Okay, given any kind of barring destruction of it really falling off here, I would like to see it come back down into our channel and play off of that. But the fourth shape I wanna show you is a capital B. A capital B, is even. It doesn't know quite yet if it's going to be bearish or bullish. What I emphasize on where I think price is headed is where the POC is. You're going to have a literal capital B. If the POC is in the bottom one, I lean more bearish at the moment. And if it's in the top one, I lean more bullish at the moment. Again, stocks and volume profile can change at any given time, right? A really big order comes in, shifts that thing up. Now I consider it bullish, right? So again, the letter B, whatever one's the fatter 
part of the B that has the POC, I lean that way. So just looking at um, just looking at HLT, let's clear everything. So we do clear drawing set, boop, it's all gone. As we can see, looking at the volume profile, we have an obvious top and then an obvious bottom. That's definitely a capital B with a massive gap, it's beautiful. And again, capital B. Seeing as I have the POC in the bottom and the whole area volume at the bottom here, I'm gonna consider this more of a bare setup for now. Now again, I'm not gonna disc discount this beautiful trend line. I mean, these are you know, things that dreams are made of, right? Beautiful trend line, I put that over any one indicator, but your last one is a capital B. Wherever the POC is, I put weight into that. And the last and almost most important major point is that volume profile is gonna change. I keep preaching it. I keep preaching, you need to be dynamic. And you can use volume profile to be extremely dynamic and where the price of the, of the where the price of the stock is headed. What you can do is you can put it on the chart and then backtrack and see where it was, but also track where it's gonna be headed. I'm gonna show you. So this is SDC. I've been calling this on my channel. Right now it's January. I've been calling this and made some huge money. I want you to notice something. The POC is down here and the area value is right here. As we can see, the area value acted as a strong support. Not always the case, but for this stock, it did. So we played it accordingly. And again, the farther away from the POC you get, the weaker it's gonna act. But if it moves up, if the POC shifts up, it's a massive sign of strength. Again, indicators change. If you come to this for the first day, you're gonna place it and then it'll be like, all right, this is my, my mean, this is my average. If you come back in a month, because you've charted it physically on your chart, you come back and it's moved up five or 10 bucks, huge sign of strength. That shows that above the price where it was is now where the volume is. It's a massive, massive thing you need to do. You need to track these things. If that happens, huge sign of strength. I'm gonna show you. Here's SDC where it was when I first charted it, and I was right over here. If I go to studies, edit studies, and I do volume profile, and add it, apply, where is it now? It's up here. So let's take our area value, scroll on up. As you can see, it lines up perfectly. It shifted up. Your POC has literally shifted up almost from here, almost $4 higher. That means that the average price is now gonna be in here. So again, you can now play this accordingly. It's gonna come down. Most likely it's gonna break this resistance, or the, the support, come down and retest again, but again, the POC shifting up is a huge sign of strength. I'll show you one more. This may be a little more evident, SWI, we were playing it, they had horrible news. It crashed down, and came all the way down to the bottom of our area of value. As you can see, it was testing and break new highs. Here's your area of value, what happens? We go back and we now add area of value, add volume profile one more time, come back. Where is it now? Well, it looks like our whole entire channel has now shifted down. Uh, pro tip, the one with the two dots cannot be moved. The one with the one dot can be moved up and down. So move that one up and your POC has shifted down almost $4, man. So the average is now down here. All of this, this trend line is gone. It's no longer relevant. So that's a huge thing for you. If you do not physically mark these, you will not be able to do this. You need to be able to mark these, put these two things down, your area value and your POC, and then track them. I have one more tip for you. No one does this. This is a pro tip and it works every single time. Let's say you come to this stock and you wanna see where it was before. You can actually do that because on this time chart, you can reverse time. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna use Apple as an example. Now, Apple has been on the Ascension it's a great, great tool for this. I wanna mark out our area value. Go right and go left. Extra, again, this has to be done every single time. It's a non-negotiable, it's a rule you must always follow putting it down first or after your supports and resistances. Redraw as a channel. Here we go. What you're gonna do is go to on demand. Click it, it's until you're now on demand. As you can see, we can then go ahead and track time, go back in time, go forward in time. If we go to January where it is, right now it's the 28th. If I were to go to the 26th and hit go, as we can see, this was two days ago, right? Looks really good. Our lines have not been taken off the chart yet. If I wanna go back a month, 
to December 28th and hit go, as you can see, it ships. As you can see, the POC hasn't changed, but your area of value has. So you can say, okay, at this time, I may have been a little bit more weak on it. You know, that's all right. You can then go back even farther. Go back to September 28th. Hit go. It'll load for a second. On your chart is still your POC. Do you see how it's still on there? You can then say, okay, four months ago, it was down here. So what has happened? Since September, it's shown major signs of strength. You have on there, the one that's not marked is where it was in September 28th. Now it's all the way up to where it is now. You can go through this every single time and have some great results with POC and your area value if you use the on-demand tool. Again, it's supposed to be used for paper trading, but it applies to this as well. Again, extremely pro tip for you. It's so powerful to partner together. Let's do one more together. So this is TXN, Texas Instruments, it's with calculators. So again, let's just do volume profile. Again, you can do all the trend lines, they're obviously there. But again, let's just stick with what we're doing. So let's just take our, use trend line tool, but I'm going to use this one for this particular setup. So we have our trend lines right here. Modify those, activate, double click, or just edit's fine. That's good. And then we have our POC right here. Again, edit properties is fine. Again, you can use a trend line draw channel. I'm just going to use our price level tool. Looks really good. Okay, on demand. So let's go to current day. So January 26 was the other day. So let's go back and let's go back two days. Our POC has not moved. You see it has shifted. You see how even two days ago you could have gotten some information. Let's go back a month. So December 28th. Our POC has not changed. You see it's still up here really high. Looking good. Let's go back a month. We'll go back to November 28th. <gasps> That's my birthday. We can now see how big of a difference that is. So from November 28th to January 28th, you see how it's shifted almost $50 higher. That's from this stock price, that's you know twice its value in the POC. That's a fantastic sign of strength, right? That shows you how powerful it is. Go back even farther. And as you can see, the POC is not even on the screen. This was the bottom of our area value, and that's all the way down here. It shifted up even higher. So again, this is extremely powerful for you. So when you partner this with your supports and resistances and channel plays, you can really see the on-demand button plus volume profile charted correctly can show you how strong a stock is. Yes, EMA lines are great. Yep, patterns are great. It's all great stuff. This is another fantastic tool. This is a very dramatic version of it because you can just put this in the wait a week or two and see it going up. It works really well in real time when you do this, but again, the on-demand tool is a great, great tool to use when you're really trying to track volume profile strength. So there you have it. What do we cover? Firstly, we covered what volume profile is, the five main parts of it, the high volume nodes, low volume nodes, some gaps, the area of value in your POC, all the really important things. We then learned that our high volume nodes, including the POC, are very strong supports and resistances. Your low volume nodes are where gaps are gonna happen and where our wicks are gonna form. We also learned that the POC, it's not only a support and a resistance, it's extremely gravitational. As price gets closer to it, it gets consolidated, moves, takes off and comes back to it and then keeps consolidating. The farther away from the POC you get is a very good sign of strength. And then lastly, what we learned was that with the on-demand tool partnered with volume profile, you can use EMA lines, you can use whatever you like, but you can also see very clearly that if you use those together, it'll show you price strength and where volume is headed. Because if volume is higher, that means that bulls are buying higher and we are going to go long in this market it's a great tool to use for everything again just a caveat just to kind of cover our bases i always put price action first i always put what the chart showed me first chart supports resistances trend lines and then our indicators volume profile is probably the top most important one when it comes to actually buying off of but again rsi vortex whatever it is all of these come second to price action that is it. We'll see you guys for our next lesson in just a minute.